Kanchenjunga is the third highest mountain in the world. Located in the eastern Himalayas, it straddles the border between Nepal and India, with its main summit standing at an elevation of 8,586 meters, 28,169 feet, and that is where Benoit Chameau lost his life, or better said, he disappeared and never came back. Benoit was only 34 years old when he opted to summit the world's third largest mountain, he started his journey with one of his Sherpa. Apparently, he was bent on the exploration of the uncharted north face of Dalugiri, the seventh highest mountain in the world. Accompanied by his trusted partner, Pierre Royer, they aimed to conquer the untamed and treacherous terrain. In the autumn of 1995, two of the mountaineers, the Swiss climber Erhard Luretten and the French climber Benoit Chimeau, were looking forward to climbing this mountain and becoming the third person in the world to accomplish this title. The race that started as a race, or we could say as a rivalry, turned into the death of Benoit. By September 1995, both of the climbers had climbed 13 of 14 8,000ers, and now Kanchenjunga was the next goal. It was the day of September 20 when Benoit, along with Royer, had begun their treks toward the base camp. The Swiss team of Erhard was also moving towards the base camp at the same time. By October 3rd, both the teams made it to the base camp and then they aimed to ascend from the Nepalese side. By the 4th of October, both the teams made it to Camp 4, which was nearly 7,400 meters. By that time, Benoit and his Sherpa, who was a photographer too, were happy with their progress as it was going per plans with no major delays in between. They planned to start their journey to their final destination in the early morning of the next day. The Swiss team planned the same thing. It was the 5th of October, and almost after midnight, around 2 a.m., the Swiss team decided to start their journey towards the peak. The French team consisting of Benoit and Royer decided to start their journey toward the peak at around 3 a.m. Benoit was positive about climbing the mountain first and becoming the third person in the whole world to climb this ever dangerous and yet beautiful Kanchenjunga, but as they were on their way, they realized that they were lagging behind the Swiss team and were failing to pass them or come closer to them. Along with Ryur, Benoit also met a Sherpa, Riku, who was on his way to the summit too. The speculations tell that by the time Benoit and Ryur were at the base camp, they didn't get much time to rest and were not in good physique to move and climb this giant mountain. However, on the other end, the Swiss team seemed to be in good physical condition as he had more time to rest while moving. At this point, the French team, Benoit Rieur, should have moved back as their physical health was not supporting them to move ahead. This is what many of the climbers say now whenever they are asked about Benoit's decision to keep moving. Well, this is clearly what Benoit didn't do. He decided to move ahead and they were on their way up to the mountain. As if luck was not on their side and it had to give Benoit clear signs to step back, the temperature started getting deteriorated. This affected their progress to the mountain as they were very slow throughout the morning walk. This made the photographer Sherpa Riku rest for a moment. As he sat down to stable his breath, he lost his control and slid through the mountains. He failed to help himself and crashed down the mountain into the abyss of death. After seeing tragic, sudden, and jarring death in front of their eyes, they were taken aback but still Benoit was bent on ascending to the summit as per their plan. Now this seems a mistake and a bit disrespectful towards the Sherpa, as even after seeing that they have lost a Sherpa, they should have stopped their summit now, but they kept going. A blunder that later turned into tragedy. In the meantime, the Swiss team, Erhard, was successful in summiting the mountain and became the third person in the world to climb Kanchenjunga. He was the second person to climb without any supplement of oxygen. But even after this, Benoit didn't lose hope and continued walking towards the destination he always dreamt of. Later that day, at around 4 p.m., when the Swiss team was heading downwards to the base camp, they met Benoit Rayur. As per Erhard, Benoit Rayur looked quite exhausted and were tired of nonstop walking, but they wished to complete their task today. Erhard wished him luck and kept on descending to the base camp. Little did he know that Benoit would be in danger if he continued further. Everything looked quite fine to the team back at the base camp, 
as there were no alarming situations reported by any of the alpinists. But this changed in a matter of hours, when at around 5.30, Benoit informed his team through a radio transmission in which he stated that Rayur had decided to call it quit as he was concerned about the low rate in the day. It was getting difficult to breathe every single minute they ascended. Benoit said that Royer would be back to Camp 4 soon, but he is not coming until and unless he completes this mission. But things started taking turns when the calm weather started rebelling and the wind started blowing at a very high rate. Along with bad weather conditions, the daylight was fading away as it was almost 6.30 in the evening. Benoit tried to keep going towards his destination, but the journey became difficult second by second. And at the moment, he decided to abandon the summit attempt. He was informed about this situation through the radio he had, but this was the last time that his team heard from him. It was his last message to the world. Till now, there was no sign of Royer too. He didn't reach Camp 4, and it was assumed that he might have been waiting for Benoit and that they would descend together, but it was not so. As Benoit was descending, a vicious storm engulfed the mountain, unleashing its full fury. The Tempest tested their skills, endurance, and willpower. Mother Nature's unyielding power revealed itself, trusting the climbers into a fight for their very survival. The teams back at the base camp were in fury and tense as they feared the worst for both Benoit and Rieur. The condition was getting worse, High winds were blowing with a freezing temperature, and it started snowing too. There were very low hopes for both of them now. They were also not carrying any kind of emergency equipment, which again is a mistake they should not have made. Now, you may consider this as the end of both of them, as there were no signs and no contact by any of the two. But in the early morning, on the 6th of October, the radio again came to life, and at the other end, the team heard Benoit, a ray of hope that he would be fine and alive was everywhere in the camp. When he talked through the radio, his voice was faint and seemed to be fading away with every minute. He asked for Rieur. As soon as he got a call from Benoit, the Swiss team detected him through a telescope. He was hiding from the harsh winds behind a rocky ridge. Benoit then asked for directions to descend back. Erhard was there, and since he climbed down and knew the directions, he guided Benoit and asked him to stay warm and stay motivated to come back. Though Erhard guided Benoit and encouraged him to keep going, destiny didn't allow it to happen. After a while, they lost Benoit's sight from the ridge. It looked as if the mountains had engulfed him in their wide wildlife. And there, Benoit and Rieur will live forever. On the evening of 6 October, the weather again started getting bad. And at that point, the teams back in the base camp lost all hope for Rieur and Benoit to be alive. Now instead of looking for the survivors, the rescue teams were looking for the dead bodies of the two. After a week of this tragic incident and not finding them anywhere, an Italian rescue team again searched for the two of them and they were found Benoit's and Royer's radio on the top of a rock hill. But there was no sign of the Alpinists themselves. Afterward, Several planes and helicopters were sent along with the rescue team members to look for any of them, but to no avail. Till now, after 28 years of this incident, people are still not able to forget these passionate people who lost their lives in the mountains. Every year we lose people who are devotees of mountains and they end up in those mountains forever. Born on June 2nd, 1961, in Annecy, France, Benoit Chameau possessed an unwavering spirit and an insatiable thirst for adventure from an early age. The mounds called to him, becoming the centerpiece of his existence. It is said that he summited 13 of 8,000ers in the Himalayas. However, three of these ascents, Makalu in 1995, Cho Oyu in 1990, and Shisha Pangma in 1990, are disputed and informally reported he has officially made 10 ascents. Benoit's passion led him to become one of the most accomplished and respected mountaineers of his time. He dedicated himself to mastering the intricacies of climbing techniques and developing the physical and mental strength necessary to conquer the world's most formidable peaks. He had numerous notable ascents to his name, including several difficult climbs in the Himalayas. He successfully reached the summit of several peaks, such as Makalu, 
the fifth highest mountain in the world, Kashabrum II, and Broad Peak. He was known for his alpine-style approach, preferring lightweight expeditions with minimal support rather than large and heavily guided expeditions. The foundation Benoit Shimu was established as a non-profit organization in honor of Benoit Shimu. It operates under the support and guidance of the Foundation of France. The foundation's main objective is to provide education and support to Sherpa children who have experienced the loss of their fathers during mountain expeditions.